Welcome to a special couple episodes of Fortune and Strife using the new Adventures in Rokugan rules from Edge Studios uh, using D&D 5th Edition as its uh, base. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get right uh, into the game, but to uh, let you know of uh, your players and GM, uh, for once, uh, myself, Robert, uh, your uh, faithful Bayushi Shinichi will be uh, playing uh, as a character this time. I will be playing uh, Doji Yukimaru. And Jeannie, who normally plays Doji Gen, will be playing Doji Yua. And Tyler, playing as uh, Kakita Sho this go around. Eric will be playing a, uh interesting character. His name is Oda, but he will be masquerading as a member of the family by the name of Yodami Gohan. And hi, I'm Shannon Calvar. I'll be your uh, game master for the evening and potentially a second. Sounds good. And with that, take it away, Shannon. So, first off, I wanted to start by saying thank you for playing with me this evening. Uh, I very much appreciate the opportunity, and I hope that we can all have fun together. The second thing I'd like to say is you are all of you resting now. Uh, the aftertaste of the welcoming feast, to the extent that it was a feast and it was welcoming, still lingering on your tongues. You can hear the quiet whisper of the snow as it is blown by the wind against the, against the walls of your old home. A place which you had, you thought, outgrown years ago. And perhaps you have, perhaps you have not. High above, Lord Moon's face scowls down at the world, bathing everything in a kind of off-silver light. The night is filled with shadows. And, with some degree of silence, not the silence of a city where there's constant movement, or the silence of the forests, where all of the creatures wake up and creep at night. But the silence of a homestead. A homestead long, cold, and quiet, uh, but nevertheless a home. A quiet that is broken as you hear a scream coming from the quarters you used to live in. The quarters where your wet nurse still lives and where you lived before your Gimpukus. You are staying in the family section, the small outbuilding where the second son lives and where you have been quartered, because obviously it would be inappropriate for you to be quartered in the children's quarters. The scream grows loud and we roll for initiative. All right. Now, if I read this correctly, we don't add um, proficiency to this. It is just um, dexterity plus any bonuses we get from feats or classes, correct? That is correct. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I, I have a tired. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, so... Uh, we have a Gohan going at 12. We have a uh, Yukimaru going at 5. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, Kakita Show, uh, 16, looks like. Correct. 16, there it is. Y Yua, uh, 2 plus 2. Is yeah, that correct? Or or it's four. sad. <laughs> well, you certainly were not expecting, you know, shrill screams in the night. You, there we go. Sorry. Well, as a proper a... younger sister, she couldn't have possibly get a higher initiative <laughs> than her older brother. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Um, you hear the sound of something quite large um, and a crash. Uh, from the children's quarters. Then show your reflexes honed by decades of decent training and your potential realized uh, at the Kakita Academy, you are immediately ready and begin to do what? 
I'm going to start making my way over towards the children's quarters. Uh, just mm -hmm. to make sure, uh, are, mm -hmm. do we have all or any of our uh, equipment on us, or has that been handed off to uh, servants? <laughs> well, if your household were doing better, uh, you would, in fact, have servants to handle your things. Uh, ah. However, in this case, uh, the servants who were here the last time you were here have left. And you are, each of you, taking care of your own equipment. And to some extent, your own rooms, although your room was set up for you a little bit. So your weapons and armor are there in your room with you, uh, as well as whatever pack you might have had. Then I will have uh, grabbed my katana and started making my way to the children's quarters with as much haste as I can muster. Okay. Uh, and I do have to, I do have to ask, what degree of dress? Oh, I'm wearing my uh, very uh, resplendent clothes. Uh, obviously, okay. I want to make a good impression. Okay. So, so you, are you, are you are still dressed as you were for dinner. Cool. Uh, okay. Um, you go through, or you, you open your screen, uh, which leads out onto the old garden with its pond. Uh, the garden has seen better decades. Um, you can see where uh, once this was a, uh, not beautiful is perhaps the wrong word, well-tended uh, garden for aesthetic purposes. Has, it has to a great extent been repurposed at this point for uh, winter vegetables and uh, ferns along with a, the pond, which you can remember as being a deep and clear pool uh, that was filled with fish and that froze, froze over uh, to be a source of delight during your childhood, uh, is now kind of a patch of muddy reeds. But looking past all of that, you can see the children's quarters, which is just past the storehouse. Uh, it is a low kind of squarish building uh, with a you know, low peaked roof. And you can see that the side of it that leads into the gardens has been broken down uh, and fitful light streams from inside. Having passed through, you would you like to continue your path towards the, towards the quarters? Uh, yes. Okay. So at 12, Gohan. Uh, Gohan would probably still be uh, also dressed for dinner, but probably uh, a little more laid back and loose than everyone else, because as mm -hmm. far as he understands, home is where you can, you know, relax and let your guard down around family. So he's probably kicked off his shoes. Uh, mm -hmm. Komodo is very kind of open. Um, but yeah, when he, they hear the screaming, um, they go straight into action. Um, they... <sighs> They're not used to living in buildings, uh, so I think the impulse to react might be stronger than their knowledge of, like, open the store. So they might just Kool-Aid <laughs> through the paper door on the way to the kids' room. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I believe you are a pilgrim. Do you have enhanced movement speed? I do. Uh, um, and as he's running there... Uh, mm -hmm. The pond's pretty gross and overgrown and in the way. Um, the garden's a little overgrown and uh, not well maintained. Mm -hmm. So as a field spirit, um, they're going to kind of be muttering under their breath, calling in sort of any favor or uh, incantation that they've learned from other field spirits and commies over the years to help give them passage. And they are going to spend a hit die and activate mm -hmm. one of their abilities. Named one with the elements, uh, mm -hmm. bonus action, and for the next minute, one of they get a bunch of movement bonuses, but one of them is they can move across water, and they don't have any penalties from difficult terrain. Okay, um, excellent. And they're just going to make a straight line <laughs> to the kids' room. <laughs> okay, uh, so show as you are moving, moving around the pond and trying to, you know, make your path there. Uh, you see Gohan just take off uh, and like just comes right through. Um, 
And what is your passive perception? My uh, passive perception is a 13. Okay. So you see him take off, uh, but you don't necessarily see anything odd. Uh, well, I, I, I noticed that he busts through the, the <laughs> well, uh, paper door. That's... Okay. Uh, That's uh, odd. Well, you know, <laughs> anything truly bizarre. You notice him do something, it's like, oh, boy. <laughs> Yukimaru, uh, where are you starting off? Oh, um, probably uh, upstairs in the uh, mm -hmm. in the family quarters there. Yeah. And uh, for the most part uh, was um, probably all set for bed. I'm probably in my bed clothes at this point. Okay. And is probably uh, uh, coming out uh, of the uh, the room mm -hmm. in uh, just their their uh, sleeping kimono. Uh, okay. Maybe their tabby socks on if they if they uh, hadn't quite got to that part uh, of uh, bedding down for the evening <laughs> just yet. Maybe yeah. I was having a smoke just before uh, 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 turning in for the night, and uh, I'm going to be. Uh, kind of, uh, yeah, uh, padding down the stairs, coming around uh, mm -hmm. off the veranda into the courtyard, okay. and uh, realizing that uh, there is, uh, you know, kind of someone screaming bloody murder, but I haven't bothered to grab a, a wakazashi or anything like that, and mm -hmm. uh, kind of in the uh, what's kind of become the uh, courtyard garden here, I'll reach over towards the. Um, the the mochi pounding uh mallet and mm -hmm. as i go to grab for it the 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 handle <laughs> just comes right off the head of the whole thing <laughs> and all i have right now is a fundamentally a very poor stick or 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 axe mm -hmm. handle kind of thing in my hands but mm -hmm. it's it's better than nothing and i'll continue <laughs> on to the uh children's quarters with this uh kind of improvised uh staff that i have okay and I believe you are proficient in insight. Is that correct? Uh, I am. Okay. Uh, you recognize the voice as Unoko, your uh, wet nurse. Uh, she was wet nurse to the four of you, uh, who has been here uh, literally as long as you can remember, but pretty much as long as anyone can remember. Yeah, no, she's, uh, she's older than the, than the Foundation Stones. They, <laughs> they, they, they built the place around the old woman. Um, yep. is she, is she tending to any children currently that we know of in the household? Uh, not that you know of. Okay. Uh, however, uh, the young lady who is, uh, trying to assist Sani, uh, so Machiko, uh, is living with her. Okay. So they're using the children's quarters kind of as a servant's quarters ish. Okay. For, for uh, what servants we have left. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Then I'm just going to. Uh, yeah, continue on around the pond uh, over mm -hmm. to the uh, uh, to the children's quarters so we can find uh, uh, what's going on. I think I might cry out for Unoko as I recognize the voice <laughs> and okay. uh, continue on. Excellent. Um, and Yua. Yua has after the as soon as possible after dinner she changed out of her. Um, ceremonial clothes but she just changed into her normal like kind of traveling clothes because mm -hmm. uh she doesn't know when she's going to get thrown out anyway um <laughs> she hears the scream uh she goes into river stance mm -hmm. uh first thing and Ooh. grabs her naginata mm -hmm. which is propped up by the door and then dashes. Ah, so you take a move and a dash. I take a move and a dash uh, mm -hmm. as her bonus action. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I may I ask, that is that something special for Bushi, or is this a maneuver yes. that I'm not familiar with with uh, fifth edition? Okay, excellent. All right. Well, a dash. Anybody can do a dash, right? Um, that means you basically are running <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. right uh, no, no, it's not but, not careful movement it's very just it's it's transferring speed for uh, for for uh, protection as right it were. it's, it's yeah. using your action as a run right Got however okay. bushy using river stance can do that as a bonus action so oh, in D &D, nice. you have your action your bonus action and your reaction every very turn. cool so you could really cover some ground then mm -hmm. so yeah i'm 
I'm covering the ground. And if I understand this right, uh, mm -hmm. since I'm taking reaction this turn, that uh, that gets me um, a focus point and then another one at the end of the turn. Is that how that, that works? That is, in fact, how that works. Uh, from a movement standpoint, everyone has pretty much been dashing. Uh, you've been, you know, as we've talked, you've had a movement and then an action as you move, right? Uh, trying to get to where you can actually see what's going on. But Yua uses one of her special abilities. Her, she takes on the river stance. That actually preserves her action as she goes charging across the garden and sees something. She enters the room, enters the kid's building, and may attempt now, uh, would, if you would like to actually look about, uh, that would actually be what's called a search roll as you try to assess the situation. Okay. As your action. Okay, so what do I roll for my search roll? This would be either perception or investigation. In this case, I would probably rule perception as okay. you sweep the room with a glance. Okay, give me a sec. So that's, a, that's actually a question. Um, <laughs> if I use search as a regular action and I did my dash as a bonus action with a river stance, do I get two in two focus points? I think that, I do. That is the reading, yes. Cool. Okay, I got a, a 10 on my perception check. Okay. You sweep the room with a glance. Or, to be more precise, you sweep uh, the interior of your former home. Uh, the room on the first floor is actually just one large uh, room. Uh, and you can see Yua. Or, excuse me, not Yua. Um, you can see... There we go. Uh, Unoko. Uh, she is... Standing in the middle of the room, she is sweeping a, uh, it's probably a feather, it's probably a duster, to be honest with you. Um, it's just, you know, <laughs> uh, she's, but she's sweeping it around, um, sh shouting, and she's, she seems pretty panicked. Uh, she is uh, kind of tall for a woman and very broad of shoulder, um, and uh, fairly stout at this point in her life. Um, towering next to her uh, is the young lady uh, who was attempting to uh, serve this evening. Uh, and her hair is unbound, uh, and she looks as though she were just being, you know, just getting ready to go to bed. However, those are not the things that you mostly see. What you mostly see is a, is a, a writhing mass of shadows that are kind of swirling around them. And it is very indistinct, but you see what appear to be large, maybe cat-like shapes. It's, they're hard to make out. Um, and with that, we come to the end of our first round. All right. We go back up to the top of the order. As uh, you have pointed out to us, it is very important to remember that you have a action a bonus action, a reaction, and you have movement. So your action is what you do. <laughs> your bonus action, unless it specifically says otherwise, can happen either before or after your action, but it has to be on what's called your turn. So I will say at 16, we'll go to show, and show can take a bonus action and an action, or a action and a bonus action. Um, that seems a little fiddly, and it is, um, but it's important for some abilities. Additionally, you have, unless your character sheet says otherwise, I'm looking, I'm looking at you, uh, Yukimaru, uh, you have one reaction. A reaction can be taken anytime an ability is, anytime the trigger condition is met, but you can only do one between the start of your turn and the beginning of your next turn. Did that make sense? Yeah, makes perfect sense to me. Okay, uh -huh. awesome. 
Yep, uh, I've just got the I've just got the extra one. Yes, you have two. <laughs> um, which is awesome, particularly with some of your flourishes. All right. So, uh, unfortunately, they go at nineteen, whatever it is they are. Um, and they turn, and you see lunging from the darkness and the swirling shadows some kind of a creature at this point show you you've come kind of closing in uh gohan you are almost there yourself you are there yourself uh but you see a, a shadowy creature uh perhaps a large cat maybe uh come leaping forward headed straight for unoko it will hit Yua, is there anything you would like to do Yes, I would like to... It doesn't even use a reaction, I believe. Okay, she is a friendly creature, right? Uh, yes. Friendly but firm. She is within... All right. She is within the range of the melee weapon I am currently wielding, which is a Naganada, yes? Yes. I would like to spend my reaction to mm -hmm. make an athletics check with mm -hmm. EC equal to the attacker's passive perception score. Okay. What are you, well, so what are you doing? Hold, hold on a second. I just need to check one other thing. I'm still learning my abilities. That's okay. Um, We're all learning our abilities. Oh, okay. Actually, I should probably do intercession rather than Valorious Bodyguard. Nope. I should do Valorious Bodyguard. All right. Um, Valorious Bodyguard. Um, it's my feet. Um, it says when a friendly creature within range of my melee weapon is targeted by attack and can spend my reaction to make an athletics check with DC equal to the attacker's passive perception score. Uh -huh. On success, I impose disadvantage on the attack roll and the creature becomes provoked by me. Excellent. And then we'll see where we go from there. But that's a good start. That is an awesome start. So describe what you do. All right, I throw myself in the way of the um, creature mm -hmm. in so much as I can and wave my Naganata at it. You sweep your Naganata around, um, spinning to place yourself between it and your nurse. You have to roll your athletics check. All right, I did uh, on my athletics check. Yes. I did uh, 18. 18. All right. You sweep yourself in between the two fast enough, uh, which is a good thing, because you see a tentacle, perhaps, uh, something long and dark, uh, wrap around the haft of your naginata as you pull it away from your wet nurse. Uh, the creature slams into you, and it, whatever it may look like, it certainly feels solid. Ouch. Um, as... Go ahead. Okay. So, well, um... Mm -hmm. I'm just confirming. I, I should have plus one bonus AC yes. on this, against this person. That right, is correct. This, this thingy. And, uh, it... Uh, has disadvantage to attack anybody else other than me. That is correct. Uh, and it okay. shifted its attack to you. It rolled a 14 okay. and a 20. Uh, okay. So it tears into you pretty hard, uh, although you manage to avoid uh, a great deal of the harm as you push it back. Uh, but you take 11 points of damage. Okay, just to check. And, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it has disadvantage on the first attack, no matter who it's targeting. Yes. Unless it's a second attack. This is the second attack? Yes. You successfully blocked the first attack. Okay. It then switched its attack to you. Okay. Uh, and it struck you reasonably hard. Actually, it, uh, <laughs> it actually had two attacks, and one of them was a crit. Okay. Ouch. So what's, what's the damage again? Eleven. Uh, well, I'd like to use right. a reaction when uh, it takes an action. Yep. And uh, with that, uh, I will 
make uh, spend one intrigue die, um, and then I have to make a intelligence investigation check. Mm -hmm. So for me, that will be uh, with plus seven. So, all right. So mm -hmm. uh, altogether, uh, that is a twelve. That is not great. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Uh, what is the DC that I have to beat? Um, adding the highest result among the intrigue dice you rolled. Uh, if the total is higher than the creature's passive perception score, I learn something. Okay. So is uh, 12 higher than its passive perception? Unfortunately not. Fair enough. <laughs> um, uh, no, yeah, I, I, I definitely rolled like garbage there, so that's all right. <laughs> I was gonna say that that was an awesome use of that technique, and yeah, the, the I'll, just... I'll I'll try it again some other time. <laughs> well, you know, there was there were two attacks there, so let's spend another entry die and let's try that whole thing. Well, the the um, the attack is actually unfortunately called multi attack. Ah, so it is just one action. Fair enough. All right. right. It well, and I, I I am making sure we make that distinction because there are abilities that trigger off of multi attack as well. Ah, got it. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, I'll try yeah. to learn more about it later. Yeah. Yeah. Ordinarily, I wouldn't be quite that <laughs> precise, but they use no, a no. lot of... That's, this, yeah. this is D&D. It is precise. <laughs> yes. Well, and they use, they do a lot of uh, uh, martial techniques. Mm -hmm. So I want to no, make no. sure, uh, sure that it I makes don't... Total, makes total yeah. sense. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, excellent use of a technique, or a flourish, but... There is a there's a kind of a slamming and kind of a ugh, you 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 can see your sister like push push away uh, the attacker. Uh, it falls into shadows and darkness, and you can see uh, once again the shadows. You can see flickering, and the movement of the creature uh, seems to spread out across the entire room. Uh, show you're up. Now, I believe you are currently in swallow stance. If yes, I saw that I, correctly, I forgot to mention that uh, when we entered our, our initiative, uh, I got to enter into a stance, and I have chosen the swallow stance for this one. Excellent. So, with a little bit more of a, a nimble step, I will then uh, head on into this uh, mm -hmm. this battle zone, if you will. Mm -hmm. And do I, now that I've, I've kind of seen it kind of merge along into the, the rest of the shadows, uh, mm -hmm. do I still have a, a clear uh, line of attack? Um, you believe you can attack where it might be. Okay. You are not necessarily at any disadvantage, but you may not strike it. You're not entirely sure. There seem to be several of them, maybe? It's a little hard to tell. Okay. Uh, then... You know what, uh, then uh, instead I'll do this. Mm -hmm. uh, without drawing my katana, I will stand in the middle of the room, arms crossed, looking at uh, roughly where something might be, and Ooh. just yell out and just say, do not attack the elderly. Come for me instead. And I will issue a challenge of steel, even though they're not using steel. Okay. They will need to make a wisdom saving throw against mm -hmm. my dc of uh 12 awesome all right and if they fail they must come after me if they succeed <laughs> they can choose to come after me if they if they want <laughs> uh excellent and is that a bonus action a free action a that is a free action ooh okay um Your DC was 12? Correct. Okay. I will tell you that I rolled a 13. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, just one lower. Anyways. Wait, but, no, uh, th th this was a this was a uh, a skill check, was it not? No, this is I I forced them to make a saving throw. Yes. Oh, forced them to make a saving throw. Got it. He he has the ability to force people into duels with him. Yeah, that is, that's neat that it's a saving throw. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have to be a little it. bit more imposing next time. <laughs> next time. Next time. Almost. You almost got it. You actually see um, in the darkness as it swirls around, you actually see three pairs of green glowing eyes turn to look at you for a moment. And then they, they vanish back into the, into the movement. 
What is your action? Uh, you know, I'm actually feeling uh, pretty happy about this. So I'm going to just stand here and look menacingly. Okay. <laughs> I, a little overconfidence won't hurt anything, right? Uh, absolutely. Um, so are you delaying your action? Or are you readying an action? Are you... Or do you I, wish to attempt to make an intimidation check and see if you can scare one of them? You know uh, what? Yeah, we'll we'll do an intimidation check with that. Okay. That is a 13 on my intimidation. All right. Um, you aren't sure, um, but there is something happening. Uh, would you... Okay. Do you have any bonus actions you would like to take? No. All right. Uh, now we move to, if that is the end of your turn. That is indeed. All right. Uh, so now, uh, do we, we don't know if that has succeeded or failed? Uh, you do not know at this time. Got it. You, you won't know until they act. Um, so. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, keep me informed whether it does or whether it succeeds or fails. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we are to Gohan. All right. Um, will I be able to close the distance this turn? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, you, in fact, were already pretty much there, uh, but your action, you, you had used your action to close. So you are there. You can see things happening. You can see your friends, the, your friends, friends, family. Uh, two of them, one of them is posturing. Um one of them is fighting, and one of them has just arrived. <laughs> well, quote unquote, Gohan might not know what's going on, uh, but uh, this is clearly supernatural, and he does not want to be found out <laughs> and ran uh -huh. out to his bosses. So uh, <laughs> he's going to come in and choose violence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a good place that. I choose violence this evening. All right. Uh, so the Pilgrims have a interesting yin-yang mechanic where yep. uh, as his bonus action, he is going to push himself into out of balance and into yang rising. Which okay. is going to give him a plus one to damage and attack with unarmed attacks. Mm -hmm. And um, they're just going to kind of come running up and just like body check one of these sh shadow cats. Okay. Um, that would be, I mean, technically we call that an unarmed attack. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have one or two attacks on the attack action? Uh, I only have one attack. Okay. So, give me a roll. Tell me how you do. This would be a d20 plus whatever appropriate bonuses. Will a 13 hit? A 13. Let us see. Um, roll a d4. I get a one. Okay. You rush in and dis you, you rushed into body check and you actually slam into something hard in the swirling shadows. You can feel fur and a muscular body as you impact. Roll your damage. Uh, that'll be eight damage. All right. Uh, do you wish to apply any modifiers? Uh, I don't think I have any I can put on there just yet. So. Okay. So you do eight. All right. And Yukimaru. Oh, I should ask instead. Do you are you done at the end of your turn? <laughs> yes, I, I'm done with my turn. Okay. Uh, Yukimaru, your turn. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I think I'm just going to try to box in uh, the uh, kind of shadow creatures uh, mm -hmm. to the uh, to the other combatants. So I'm going to try and move into a uh, a flanking position while holding up kind of my uh, stick in a defensive uh, manner, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, move myself into. Uh, a place where I can uh, flank it with uh, uh, with Yua. Okay. Um, 
the Dungeons and Dragons action you might use for that is called dodge. Uh, that ah, is, you, okay. you, you assume a defensive stance. That is your action. You use your move uh, to kind of posi- to try to position yourself uh, with you up, mm-hmm. and that then gives them disadvantage to attack you. Perfect. All right. Uh, so yeah, then I will take uh, yeah, like you say, take dodge, mm-hmm. uh, move into uh, a position where I'm at least uh, uh, on one side, and uh, you can then finish the positioning for a flank afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever can help give her advantage uh, in the uh, in the future against these uh, uh, these these weird uh, okay uh, we these uh, formless uh, shadow cats. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, do you have a bonus action you would like to take? No. Okay. Uh, so if that is the end of your turn, it is. Awesome. Uh, we'll go to Yua. Okay. Uh, just a couple quick questions on um, positioning. Uh, of course. There are a number of critters now around around me, right? Or around here. There seem to be perhaps three of them. Um, okay. Um, are they within five feet of me? Um, they appear to be dashing in and striking and then pulling away. You do not see any of them like standing right by you. So if you can imagine, right, you've got this kind of openish room with uh, wooden sliding panels around the outer edges, right? Unoko, Unoko uh, had pulled, had kind of gotten away from the walls because mm-hmm. things, strange things were happening. So she's kind of in the center of the room and you're with her right now, uh, as is Yukimaru. There are pallets uh, and you know, some small furniture about, because uh, this is the room where a lot of you, where you used to sleep. So there's kind of, you know, bedding and bundles and things. Uh, and swirling around in the flickering firelight are moving semi-solid shadows. But none of them are here right now with you. <laughs> All right. I am making a, a, a tentative strike. So this is a strike with just a strike with my na- Naganata as an action. Mm-hmm. Straight, straight up attack. Uh-huh. Um, I am remaining in river stance for the moment. Okay. Um, and then with my bonus action, I will help uh, Yudami Gohan. Ah. Gohan. All right. Okay. So let's see if I can roll a, a, a regular old uh, strike with my uh, Naganata. Uh, will you have advantage with me flanking for you? That's a good question. At this moment, eh, I will let you make one of your attacks at advantage. I am comfortable with that. Okay, I will make the first attack with advantage. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how we do. Because you had, yeah, you had had the one that had slammed into you. And I will assume that uh, Yukimaru has positioned himself roughly uh, where he would think Flying Kink would be for that. All right, I will take the 19. Uh, Plus four is 23. 23. On the first attack. Okay, roll a d4. What does that mean? Okay. Um, you sweep through what looks to your trained eye to be the thing. The shadows burst apart upon your blade. But you do not strike anything solidly. Okay. Then with the second attack, I will use the three... Three focus that I have earned mm-hmm. thus far, and do a soul sundering strike, and hope that I hit. <laughs> okay, well let me let me ask just tactically, or would you rather uh, use one of your abilities to? Uh, do you have a multi hit attack? I do have a multi hit attack. Okay. I can I can try that. Mm-hmm. All right, I will do crimson leaf strike. It'll cost three focus. Okay. And what does Crimson Leaf Strike do? Just a second. Let's see if it does anything. (laughs) Okay. Yes. All right. That's 20. That's not bad. All right. Crimson Leaf Strike. Um, I will have to move five feet one side or another to do that. That's why I don't no longer have um, flanking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But I move around the room. 
and uh, I make a multi-target melee weapon attack uh -huh. on a hit. The creature takes my weapon damage plus my ability modifier. Uh huh. Um, and if my attack roll also exceeds its passive perception score plus five, I can disarm that creature, but it's not mm -hmm. armed. I imagine. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what it is. Okay. Those would hit. You may roll 3d4. A four, a one, and a two. Okay. A four, a one, and a two. Okay. Two of your strikes. You step up and swirl your naginata around you in a practice pattern. Um, cutting through two of the shadows so that they seem to burst uh, and striking firmly one of them. You, you connect with one of your opponents. Please roll your damage. Uh, 10 plus 4, 14. 14, all right. Because the technique gives it damage plus ability modifier. Correct. As uh, you as... Naginata passes through the shadows. They actually seem to burst, uh, leaving fewer shadows swirling about you. The creatures, whatever they are, hiss. Um, all right. Um, with my, as I said, with my bonus action, I will uh -huh. help mm -hmm. um, Yudomi mm -hmm. Gohan. Okay. Uh, since that's a help action, I will get a focus back for that, and then another focus at the end of the turn. Correct. Everyone so spend gets... three and get two. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Sounds like a plan. Gohan, you will have advantage to your next action. We come to the end of the round. Trigger any abilities that trigger at the end of the round. We then move back up to the top of the order. Okay. So, uh, as we do so, we will step back and do a little quick uh, amount of bookkeeping. Show, we've been talking a little bit off-channel about your focus point situation. Would you have rather have readied an action for when one of them attacks? Uh, instead, I would have rather have uh, drawn my blade. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I feel that that is an action, I believe, or, or at least some sort of uh, interaction. Yeah, that that is that would have been your free action for the round. So an object interaction. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. No problem. So at and I will tell you that they act at nineteen. Out of the shadows come two of these creatures in a flowing movement. You uh, how long does provoked last? It doesn't say in the ability how long it lasts. So I have to find it in the book. All right. I'm going to assume one of them is provoked by you at the moment. It lashes out. Oh, until the end of its next turn. So after its turn. Okay. All right. Um, you feel one of these things. It comes leaping out of the shadows at you. And it's fairly large. It lashes out at you with tentacles that leap up from its sides. And you can see... It has kind of a long, almost lion-like head uh, attached to a body, uh, and it has far too many legs that are lashing out at you. It's going to slam into you, you think, and you have a moment in which you breathe out and you breathe in. And then it slams into your fully armored form. What is your AC with armor? If my armor were here... So my AC with armor is 16. With Naginata, it would be 17. Against Provoked, it would be 18. I can potentially spend my reaction, but we'll see how this does, because this is a surprise. Hold on. Yes. For those of you who are not Yua, you see her standing there in her bedclothes, holding onto her Naginata, uh, a creature lunging from the shadows at her. And then you see or here it's um you hear blue light you see snowfall and you smell lilies and the creature some somehow between that moment 
and the moment of impact, uh, you hear the sound of claws scraping against lacquered armor as Yua staggers back a little bit, but is not harmed. Mechanically, before the session, I asked everyone if they had an object that they would like to have awaken. Um, the awakening condition on Yua's armor was to take a critical hit for a family member. The second one leaps straight towards show. All right, then. Will a 20 hit you? A 20 indeed will hit me. Uh, wait, show, look out. Uh, reaction, timely advice. Get down, uh, get down to the side, to your side. Yeah, on the right. And uh, I will now get to uh, the creature gains a bonus to its armor class for the attack or its saving throw equal to the highest result among your entry dice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll a d8 here. Yeah, it's just going to be, it's just going to be the one of them. Oh, sorry. I'll only get you a plus one. Oh, well, that would have been close. That puts me from a natural 17 up to an 18, but which means the 20 will still hit. The 20 will still hit. It crashes into you. You, and then it kind of, it sort of pulls itself back. You know, it, it body checks you, rat, slaps you with one of the, those long tentacles, uh, which you discover, uh, perhaps to your chagrin, are barbed. Lovely. Yeah, you can feel them scrape against your skin. But with the trained reflexes of a duelist, you nimbly avoid being pinned by the thing as it does nine points of damage to you. Okay, not not great, but not terrible. We can take that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also, you briefly glimpse uh, one of them climbing up the wall. Uh, and it looks like it's going to head across towards you, but it seems to be shying away from you a little bit. I was going to say, your intimidation attempt uh, actually did dissuade one of them from attacking you this round. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'd like to use my other reaction to use uh, Eyes Betray the Heart again. Ah, excellent. Yeah, we're going to see if we can get a better. There we go. That's uh, a much, much more likely uh, successful result. Okay, I'll, I'll just... So altogether, uh, I get a 28. I, and I will tell you that 28 does succeed. Got it. Um, okay, so um, I'd like to know the creature's motivation. The creature is trying to scare you. It's working. Uh, all right, and then with that, uh, that will open up... Um, my other class feature, which is a strategic opening. Anyone who goes after the one who uh, just barbed a show uh, will receive a plus four to its damage, uh, to their damage rolls um, uh, until the start of my next turn. All right. Okay. Speaking of, that is the end of their turn. Show, you're up. Well, if you're going to be so kind to give me a bonus, I will be glad to use it. Sword in hand, quicker than the eye can see. Uh, show flourishes the sword just a little bit, and then uh, with uh, two hands, just does a quick slice across the uh, the shadow in front of him. Uh, so quick that it is flashing steel. Uh, right. so I will be using the flashing steel cut technique, which is my signature technique. Okay. Uh, so I will go ahead and make my one attack on this one. Mm -hmm. That is a 19 total. Okay. And what does flashing steel do? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I make this attack with advantage. <laughs> I just read that the technique does advantage. Uh, that's even better. <laughs> We'll, we'll take the first roll. Uh, <laughs> so we'll take the we'll take the uh, the twelve on the die as opposed to the six. Uh, so uh, either way, uh, on a hit, uh, the creature will take my weapon damage unless it chooses to spend its reaction to move ten feet in a direction of my choice, plus five feet per additional focus point spent. So I'm spending my two focus points on this normally, 
And because this is my signature, I get to treat it as though I spent two additional points. Uh, so it's going to move 20 feet away from me unless uh, if it if it wants to move it can move without any issues but it takes its reaction to do so otherwise it's going to take the full damage okay so go ahead and give me a uh, the direction will be out into uh the open uh, basically out, out outside of the room okay so first off give me a uh roll a d4 number three Okay. Um, you swing and you actually, you do hit it as it was pulling away from you. Your, uh, your blade managed, you know, catches it firmly. Uh, it spends its reaction and goes flying out, I believe you said, towards the pond? Yes. All right. Uh, it is physical enough to where it actually does crash through uh, one of the partially open screens uh, and lands with a tumble. Coming up to its feet, many, plural, uh, it hisses and spits. And in the light of uh, Lord Moon, you can see that as it moved out and away from you, several of the shadows were plucked from the walls, uh, the things that looked sort of like it. Uh, and they, they pass through and merge through it, and it becomes difficult to see which of the things is actually the shadow and which is the monster. Uh, all right. Okay. Did that replace one of your attacks or one that of your That replaced one your of action? my attacks. Okay. Do you have two attacks around? I do have two attacks around. Okay. So uh, can I chase it down? Well, uh, in D and D, you can actually move between between attacks. Yeah, move between attacks. Uh, so you charge out and strike at it again. Correct. So we're gonna take another swing. Okay. Without advantage this time. <laughs> <laughs> Watch you get the 19. No. Okay. Oh, I was hoping. Uh, uh, we'll see if a 12 does anything, though. Uh, the shadows nimbly dance around you, uh, just barely avoiding your attack. All right. That's fine. It's now one on one outside. So let's go. It is. It is. Oh, I actually, as a good point, uh, on my movement out, does that incur uh -huh. any attacks of opportunity? Um, actually, it would. Excellent, because I wanted to draw some of those attacks of opportunity. <laughs> those are awfully handy for you. I believe those are made at disadvantage. Is that correct? Correct. As my swallow stance allows me to nimbly dodge in between areas of threat. All right. Uh, will a 14 hit you? No, it will not. Okay. Uh, as you are dodging out... Uh, the one directly above falls down and you, you actually hear it behind you as its uh, claws hit the ground. Uh, but you are not there. It was a quick little sidestep uh, as I was moving forward and uh, that uh, refocuses a little bit and I'll gain additional focus point for a uh, opportunity attack missing me. Excellent. Uh, Gohan, you're up. Oh, excuse me. Are you done with your turn? I am indeed done for this round. Excellent. Uh, Gohan, you're up. Just a quick recount. We have now one by the pond, and there are two still in the kids' rooms? That is correct. And I believe I have advantage on this attack? Uh, yes. Cool. So, as a bonus action, uh, I am going to use a form of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Let me just pull this up. Um, so as a spiritual being who should exist in their exact place and in their exact nature, um, Oda has kind of um, broken out of that mold and uh, exploiting sort of that uh, imbalance. They are going to um, harness sort of the increase of yang energy that they've put in themselves to influence the area causing any um, candles, any source of light, any bit of flame to suddenly flare up and like uh, almost like in the same way that water flows down a groove, it creates like a spiritual hollow for it to fall around um, uh, Gohan's fist as it just clocks back and just smashes again into the shadow monster with each blow sending sparks and light flashing across the room. Excellent. So I am going to go into fire form. Uh, mm -hmm. 
which one of the things it does when I hit with unarmed attacks, uh, I do 1d4 plus my proficiency bonus and additional fire damage. Excellent. So give me a roll. I'm going to take that 16. Yeah, let's go with 16. <laughs> uh, that puts us to a total of... Uh, 27. Okay. Sorry, uh, 20, uh, 25. I can't. <laughs> math. Oh, math. We math good. Um, okay, roll me a d4. Three. Okay. Um, your hand passes through a shadow which bursts into sparks and uh, sparks and bits as you spin and you see the thing moving. Um, but you do not hit it. All right. And that will end my turn. All right. Um, does your form stay with you? Uh, so what happens is on each of my turns, um, I am forced down, uh, in towards Yang territory. So next turn I'll be neutral and it will remain, uh, but I will lose the cool Yang bonuses, um, and the turn after that, it will force me into Yin, and it ends. Okay, that makes sense. Um, excellent. So, uh, if that is the end of your turn, uh, mm-hmm. Yukimaru. All right, let's see. Um, what do I want to do here? Uh, you know, uh, I think I'm just going to try to uh, take a uh, a swing at one of these things uh, uh, here with my with my uh, effectively, uh, uh, I guess, a staff uh, or or some or some sort of club or cudgel, as it were. Yep, it is a cudgel. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, I think we just roll that uh, as it is. I don't have any strength bonus, but also no minus, and it's a simple uh, melee weapon. Uh, will a thirteen hit? Are you proficient with simple simple weapons? I am. Oh, okay. then I get to add my proficiency bonus, so plus three, so sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, that will hit. Roll me a d four. Hey, right on. That'll be one damage. Ooh, big, big money. Well, uh, actually, uh, what you do, wow, uh, you pat your swing passes through another of the shadows and causes it to burst. As the shadows burst, these swirling shadows are actually disappearing. So you get a closer and closer look at the foe that you are fighting. Um, in fact, that one is down to just its one shadow. Uh, so you can see kind of crouching in the corner. This you, you swing at something that looks like it's moving. Your cudgel passes completely through it and causes the shadows just kind of to break up like smoke. Um, and you can see crouched in a corner, this man-sized cat. It certainly is cat-like. Uh, it's crouched down to spring. Uh, you can see its four legs down, next to its back legs and another pair of legs out in front of it. Um, And you can see from its sides, these writhing, lashing tentacles. Mm. All right. Um, Um, Let me see here. Let me check if I have a bonus action I want to take after. I was going to say. See the thing. Yeah. Let me take a look here real quick. Go through my list of things. Yeah. Um, Mechanically, they all have a number of images, mirror images, and you are grinding through them every time you miss one. You Got hit, it. but you miss one. Uh, that one is essentially now exposed. All right. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to activate Well of Desire. Ah, and what does that do? Uh, so Well of Desire... Uh, you can pick up the subtle clues that people of what people want and use it to probe their social defenses. You can uh, spend a bonus action in one of your entry dice uh, up to your proficiency bonus to make an int investigation check. 
adding the highest result among the intrigue dice you rolled uh, to the total. Uh, if, it's, if the total is higher than the creature's passive perception, learn one of the following. I can learn a material object the creature wants, uh, uh, presently wants, whether the creature's intentions towards you are hostile, neutral, or friendly, uh, whether the creature, <laughs> or the faction, the creature, I can know the, know the faction the creature serves, if any, um, mm-hmm. the creature's known languages, and the creature's uh, non uh, action abilities, if any. Ah, uh, so I have okay. a, a variety of uh, options there. So mm-hmm. let's see here. It's going to be 1d20 plus 7. Looking good already. I was going to say, those are, those are much better numbers than that first roll. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Is 21 higher than their passive perception? Indeed it is. Okay. Oh, um, man, I wish I'd gotten... Uh, oh, I need to roll an 8 on an 8 to learn two things anyway. So, okay, so never mind. That's uh, fairly difficult. Um, well, I know that it wants to scare us, and it has kind of uh, hit us for some HP here. I do want to know whether it is hostile, neutral, or... Well, hostile or neutral. Uh, I can also know if it's friendly or not, but it's just... Uh, trying to scare us uh, also, but uh, yeah, let me know kind of exactly how um, malicious this thing is with uh, hostile, neutral, or friendly. Oddly enough, it's friendly. Good to know. All right. I will Um, uh, piece some mm -hmm. pieces together. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. I will uh, then... um, uh activate um uh um what is it again um a strategic opening um mm-hmm. because now i've learned two facts about this creature uh mm-hmm. it will now provide people with a uh plus 5 to any damage that they do to the creature until the um uh end of my next turn however i will shout out don't hurt it <laughs> All right. Or at least don't kill it. Uh, I'll go with that. Yeah, don't don't kill it. It's almost a, it's, it's almost more scared of us than we are of it. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that the end of your turn? Uh, it is, and I have one. Just as a note, I have one entry die left. All right. Um, you are. All right, not not uh, not easy to do uh, with the not kill them. Um, they're they're doing the killing of me first. Um, okay, uh, are these are the two of them within uh, ten feet of me? Um, I'll give you a yes. It's not that big of space. It's close enough for close enough for this. Okay, I am going to then use. Um, I am then going to use my sudden clarity. Mm-hmm. At the start of my turn, as a free action, I can gain a focus point for each hostile creature I perceive within ten feet of me. Mm-hmm. So I can get two two focus points for that. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I will have a total of four focus points. Mm-hmm. All right. And I am going to go ahead and use the uh, Crimson Leaves Blow again. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you... For my first action. Is this an action or does it, set, does it uh, set, take the place this of one of your attack. attacks? Correct. This takes the place of one of my attacks. Right. It's important to note okay. that. Yep. Oh, sorry. Okay. So first attack, uh, Crimson Leaves Blow. Um, mm-hmm. All right. I have, that is a 16. This is some other bonuses. Okay. Um, you set your stance and whirl. Um one of them you will hit directly. One of them you still need to roll a d4 for. Two on the other one. Okay. You spin and leap 
you strike one, and the other one you destroy uh, one of its aim it, one of the shadows, uh, leaving basically it and only one fluid shadow. You have carved away the shroud of shadows that has wrapped itself around this building to only a few tattered remnants of it. Okay. I will roll the damage, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe uh, it's 1d10 plus 4. And then I think it's plus 5 from what uh, Yukimaru is doing. Is that correct? Plus 2, not plus 5. Plus 2. Plus no plus five to damage. Well, oh, total plus five. My, it, it's my yeah. It's it's my um. Oh, it's your efficiency um, bonus plus um, proficiency bonus plus two plus clues. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Plus clues. Awesome. So it is plus five. Okay. Plus five. There you go. All right. So, <laughs> of course, I only Ow. wrote one, but that's okay. Um, that's one plus four is five plus five is ten. You didn't want to kill it. <laughs> All right. That is one of your attacks. Would you like to use your second attack? Um, yes, it's my second attack. I will just uh, swing at... Swing at the one that still has a shadow or the one that you can hit fairly I easily I now? Could... Uh, did I get the last shadow or not? Right. No. Um, okay. I will uh, swing at the one that still has a shadow. Okay. Sure. And this is a normal. (laughs) However, I am not successful. I only got a seven. Okay. That is unfortunately a miss. All right. Okay. For my bonus action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For my bonus action. I am going to help uh, Yukimaru, uh, Yukimaru with mm-hmm. whatever he's going to do next, because he's obviously got a plan. I don't know what it is, but I'll help him. Okay. So you, listening, uh, you step up, and the two of you are fighting together, it sounds like. Um, All right. Go ahead. Are you, and is that, that gives me, and mm-hmm. so I've got one left from my that used mm-hmm. three of my fo- four focus, and mm-hmm. I gained two at the end of the turn. Okay. Because, well, one from the help and one from the thing. So now I have three focus. Okay. Well, excellent. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, that is the end of my turn. All right. Um, there's a moment there uh, where you can clearly see now that there are these three creatures. Um, Unoko raises and you know, waves her sputtering, sputtering lantern and waves her uh, duster about, and she shouts, Go! Get out of here! Go! You're not welcome! The three kind of pull back, well, the two in this room kind of pull back a little bit. Um, and you can hear uh, sobbing uh, from the mound of clothes that uh, the girl has collapsed into. There's kind of a breath, and then 